Hello friends, today we are gonna create this beautiful chat application using React and Firebase. We will be able to create a new user or login. After that we will see this chat page. There are the latest conversations here. We can click on them to see messages or search for any user to start a new conversation. I can send a text. I can send an image and all these operations are real time. Let's log into the second user's chat and see how fast it is. And also, if someone else writes anything to us, we are gonna see it here immediately with the latest message. It's a perfect project to learn React and the latest version of Google Firebase. And finally, we are gonna deploy this application using a hosting service. To do that, we will be using Hostinger. It's my favorite hosting provider and the sponsor of this video. I've been using their services for two years and never had a single issue. I've deployed all my websites on their servers and they are really fast. You can use just one hosting for many websites. And also, you are gonna get a free domain and free SSL certificate at this price. It's amazing. And if you have some large applications that require more memory and more space, you can prefer a VPS server. After selecting the best option for you, choose your time period here. And if you use the link in the description below or LamaDev coupon code here, you are gonna get an extra discount. After choosing the payment method and purchasing, you are gonna redirect it to Hostinger panel. So let's claim our free domain and set up our hosting. I'm gonna write a domain name. After the registration, it's ready to use. So let's set up the hosting, build a website. I'll start from scratch and choose my new domain. And we can finish the setup. It's gonna take a while and right after that you are gonna see your H panel. It's really user friendly, you can manage your domains, your folders and files. And this file manager is my favorite. You are gonna see how easy to deploy any website in a minute. So if you are ready, let's create our app and deploy it here using this manager. Okay, if you created a new folder, let's get started. Firstly, we are gonna install a React app. To do that, of course, you can use MPX create React app. But if you do that, there will be many unnecessary files here. You are gonna waste your time deleting all those folders and files. Instead, you can use my GitHub repository, YouTube 2022. And here, as you can see, there is a branch, which is React mini. We are gonna install this branch. To do that, I'm gonna come here and copy this link and I will say git clone. We are gonna install only one branch, so I will say single branch and it's gonna be react mini. And I'm gonna paste my link and finally I will say dot that because I want to install everything in this folder. I will enter and as you can see they are here. But we don't have our node modules. To install our libraries, I will just say yarn. Or if you are using npm, you can say npm install. It's gonna take a while, but before, let's see what we are gonna create. As you can see, when we visit our application, we are gonna see this login page. And also, there is a register page. And if there is a user, we are gonna see the home page. But before, let's create this register and login page. As you can see, it's ready. And if you check inside, as you can see, it's really clean. There is nothing unnecessary. It's perfect for beginning. I will say yarn start. And this is our application. Let's create here pages. And inside we are going to have login page, register page, and home page. Let's close this and create register page. I'm gonna call this component here. 
Okay, it's here. Perfect. Let's see what we are going to have. Firstly, we are going to have a container here. We are going to give this background color. And after that, we are going to create this wrapper. We will give some padding. It's going to be white background and other elements inside. Let's do that. Let me close this sidebar and terminal. Okay, let's come here. I will say class name is going to be form container. Actually, let's use it like that. And inside, one more div. And it's going to be form wrapper. And inside this, we are going to create our form. Let's check. It's going to include, of course, it's a register page. It's going to include four inputs. Three of them are text input, and this one is file input. When we click this, as you can see, it's opening folders. Let's do that. Input text, input email, input password, and input file. Let's give some placeholder. It's going to be display name, email, and password. And there is a logo here and a title, small title. I forgot them before this form. I'm going to add them. So I will say spam, let's say llama chat. And one more, and it's going to be register. And let's say title, for example. And after this input, I'm going to create a button, and it's going to say sign up. And finally, there is a text here. Let's say p tag and this text. Of course, we are going to use link here, but we are not going to use anchor tag. After when we install React Router DOM, we are going to see this link here. Let's check our app. Okay, they are here. By the way, there is no button. I didn't save. Okay, it's here and it's here. Let's give background color for the container and, and center this wrapper. To do that, you can use CSS, but I want to use SAS here. Our application is not that big. I think we can write everything inside one CSS file. And using SAS is the better option here, I think. I will say yarn add or npm install SAS. Let's create our file here. I will say style.scss. And we are going to use this file everywhere. So I can import this here. Style.scss. Okay, what was our class name? Container. Firstly, let's give our background color. It's going to be this blue color, like that. I want to make this 100%. I'll say H103H, so it's going to be full screen. And to center them, I'm going to use Flexbox. I'll say display flex, align item center, it's going to center vertically and just five content center is going to center horizontally. OK, perfect. I can do the same thing for this form, but this time I'm going to use flex direction column that because they are going to be vertical. Let's say wrapper first. And this is the best feature of SAS. You can write your children inside your parents and it prevents a lot of conflict I highly recommend you to use it. And what I was saying, okay, form. I will say display flex again, but flex direction will be column. Let's give some space between them. I will say cap 15 pixels, like that. Let's give background color for this wrapper and some padding inside. I will say background color is going to be white, and padding will be. 20 from top and bottom, 60 from left and right, like that. I can give some border radius here, and again flexbox and give some space between them. Firstly, I will say border radius is going to be 10 pixels, display flex, flex direction column, and gap will be 10 pixels, like that. Perfect. But let's center them, align item center. Okay, awesome. What about this logo and this title? I will say logo, color will be this dark blue, 
font weight will be bold and font size will be a little bit bigger like that and for this one I'm gonna give exactly the same color but font size will be smaller okay let's give some padding inside those inputs inside form this is our parent I'll say input padding 15 pixels like that but I want to delete this border instead I'm just gonna give bottom border it's gonna be none but border bottom is gonna be the main background color let's close them again actually I can separate them and you can see better okay and I didn't give here size one pixel solid and this color like that if you want to you can give here any width like that those placeholder texts are really dark I didn't like them let's change it I will say placeholder color will be RGB a little bit softer like that and what about this button again I will delete border and change the background color it's inside our form let's check okay it's ending here so I can write like that I'll say background color and text color will be white I will give some padding inside and font weight will be bold like that I forgot the lighting border and cursor pointer okay awesome for this p tag this is the form it's outside the form so I'm gonna write it here it's gonna be blue color font size will be small and I'm gonna give margin between this text and this button let's say 10 pixels okay perfect but as you realize in the real app we are using this image and this text instead of this ugly button what I'm gonna do is to hide this input and create a label which represents this file input what I mean by that let's come here I will say label as you can see it says HTML4 basically we can create here any ID let's say file or whatever you say and if I say file here same ID whatever I write here any text any image doesn't matter it's gonna represent this file input let's test I'm gonna click and as you can see it opens my folder so if I come here and say inner style and display none as you can see it's not here anymore but I can use this as a file input of course you can give here any class name and write it here but I just want to show you how you can use inner style okay so instead of this text I will say image we are gonna use this image and this text let's create here image folder and I'm gonna push here all my images we are gonna use this one okay this one let's import this import add from images and add avatar.png let's use it here span add an avatar like that but I want to center them to do that I'm gonna give here display flex and align item center let's come back after this button I'm gonna say label display flex align item center like that and I will give some space here and change this font size and color so let's say get 10 pixels color will be light color font size will be smaller like that and let's say cursor pointer that we can click okay perfect what about this image it's too big it's inside label I'm gonna say with 32 pixels 
like that. What about this login page? Let's check here. As you can see, it uses exactly the same template, so it's going to be much easier. Let me shrink this. I will copy everything here and paste inside login. Of course, I'm going to change here. My component name will be login and we are going to need only email and password. So I'm going to do it here and it's going to be sign in. And you don't have an account. So register. <laughs> I'm going to come here and call my component to see like that. As you can see, perfect. That's all. So what about the home page? Let me close this one and close everything here. I'm going to open home page. Of course, to see changes, I'm going to call it here. Of course, we don't have any function yet. Okay, it's here. Let me log in here. What was the email I forgot? Okay, this one. As you can see, we have many components here. Our sidebar, this chat panel. Inside this chat panel, we are going to have our messages, this input. So basically, writing all those components inside, inside only this component is not a good idea. It's better to separate them into small components. So I will come here and say, Components. Firstly, we are going to have this sidebar, this chat. Let's create. Inside this sidebar, we are going to have this nav bar, this search bar, and those chats. Let's say nav bar. Search and chats. And what about here? We are going to have individual messages and this input panel. Of course, you can separate more components, but it's enough, I think. It's not a big application. We don't need to worry about performance that much. Of course, we should, but it's just couple components. We are just going to refresh those chats and those messages. That's all. Okay, let's get started. Firstly, inside home page, I'm going to create this container. Let's come back. Let's say class name, home, and here I will say container. And inside, we are going to have this sidebar and this chat panel. Of course, we didn't create functions for them. Let's do that quickly. Okay. Let's say sidebar and chat components. Let's see. Okay, as you can see, they are here. Let's give some style for this component. I'm going to open again style file and create here home page. Again, background color, exactly the same color. It will be 100 VH. I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. Like that. And after, I will create a container inside this home. We are not going to have any border or background, but for now, to just see better, I will give border one pixel, solid, and let's say white. And let's give some border radius, 10 pixels. And right now, I will give some width and height. You can arrange this for yourself. It really doesn't matter. I just gave 65% and height 80%. You can make it full screen or smaller or bigger, whatever you want. And right now, I want to separate the sidebar and chat. They are going to be horizontal, but sidebar will be smaller 
chat space will be bigger like that as you can see this is one unit this is two units we can do this using flexbox easily let's say display flex as you can see they are horizontal let's go to sidebar i'll say class name is going to be sidebar and for this chat and i'm going to say sidebar and chat as i said it's going to be one unit so i can use flex here and it's going to be two as you can see it's twice bigger than sidebar perfect let's give a border here and you can see better i will say border but it's going to be only border right one pixel solid and this dark color like that actually i can give background color here it's going to be exactly the same color so we can delete this border okay perfect but as you realize this corner is still sharp that because it's overflowing if you remember our container has a border radius to prevent this overflow i will say overflow hidden like that okay before this chat let's take care of this sidebar i'm gonna open up navbar let's call it here first okay it's not coming let's import okay it's here let's open up and let's see what we are gonna have firstly we are gonna have our logo and after that we are gonna have a div here which includes this avatar username and logout button i will say class name never let's say span logo it's gonna be your application name after that let's create user div and it's going to include image span let's say john and a button it's going to be logout like that let's make them horizontal i'm going to go to style inside sidebar we have a navbar first it's a container and it's going to be display flags align item center let's make this background color darker and you can see better background color like that and i want to give a height here it's gonna be 50 pixels okay and some padding because it's really close here and i want to separate this logo and this div so i will say just by content space between as you can see it separated them by the way let's change color Actually, I regret that I didn't create color variables, but okay, it can stay. We don't have that much component. And if I update this repository or if someone sent them to me, I can update them and it will be better. But anyway, as I said, it's not a huge design. And uh, for this logo, it's gonna be bold. I will say logo like that and user div again display flex and i'm gonna give some gap between them like that and for this image we don't have yet but let's give background color for now it can be this light color and i will say height 24 with 24 and border radius will be 50 percent like that and of course to crop this image properly i'm gonna say object fit and cover okay what about this button after image again background color color will be this light color and uh, font size will be really small i want to delete all those borders like that and it's gonna be clickable so it's gonna be cursor pointer okay perfect let's find here quickly an image let's use this woman here now bar image 
Okay, perfect. So what about this part? As you remember, there is a search bar here. Let's create. I'm going to close this navbar and inside sidebar, I will say search components. Okay, it's not coming again. Something is wrong. I will say search. And it's here. So what we are going to have here, let's check. As you can see, there is an input. And when we search for something, we are going to show this user something like that. I'm going to open search. Let's give a class name. Firstly, we are going to have search form. And inside, we are going to have our input. And after this form, I'm going to create a div. It's going to be user chat. Let's say image. I'm going to paste exactly the same image. And user chat info. And one more span. And it's going to be display name. Let's say Jane. Okay, it's really huge. Let's take care about this. Inside navbar. I will say search border, but it's going to be only border bottom, one pixel, solid, and gray. And inside we have search form, inside we have an input, and I will not write this user chat here, that because it's common, instead I'm going to come here and write it here, outside of search, but it's still inside sidebar. Let's take care of what this image first. And we can see better after that. I will say 50, height 50, border radius. Okay, it's still the same. Oh, I'm writing inside navbar. Of course, it should be sidebar. So I'm gonna move them like that. Okay, perfect. As you can see, this image is pretty weird. Let's give object fit. Like that. Okay, awesome. Let's give some padding for this search form. And inside this input, I'm going to say background color transparent. As you can see, like that. Let's delete this border here. And color will be white. So when we write something, we are going to see it like that. But I want to get rid of this outline like that and let's give here placeholder i will say placeholder find a user and i want to change this color also placeholder color will be light gray okay it's much better i think so what about this user chat Let's give padding again, display flags, align item center, I'm gonna give gap between them, like that, color will be white, and cursor will be pointer. Like that. And when I hover over this user chat, I'm gonna change the background color, so let's say hover, background color will be our dark color. Let's check. Okay, perfect. And in our application, as you can see, we have many users here. Let's create them. I'm going to open up sidebar again and chats component. Let's create here. I'm not writing those users here directly, that because whenever we refresh these users, that because when we add here some message or when we receive any message, this list will be refreshed. So I don't want to re-render this search component and navbar component. That's why we are using different components. So I'm going to open up chat component and let's give class name. And I'm going to copy here and paste inside. But there's a difference here, that because when we search for any user, there will be no message here.
but in our conversations, we are going to have latest message. So I'm going to add one more thing and it's going to be, let's say, p tag. Hello. Let's open up style again. And let's change this. By the way, this is going to be bold. I forgot that. So what was the parent user chat info? After this image, I will say span and p tag. This is going to be username, font size a little bit bigger, and font width will be bolder. And for this one, font size will be 14, and color will be light gray. Like that. Let's create some more users here. It's just the design, of course, we are going to delete them later. Okay. Okay, this is capital, this is capital. It's not that much important, but anyway. Okay, perfect. So what about this chat component? Again, we are going to have this top bar. Of course, we don't have any video calling feature or friendship feature, but it looks nice. <laughs> and maybe in the future we are going to create. So let's come here. I'm going to close everything and open up chat and style. Let's create here chat info. It's going to be top bar. I'm going to create here span. It's going to be username. And we are going to have some icons. Let's say chat icons. And inside we are going to have three images. I will import them quickly. First one will be camera. Second one will be add friend icon and more icon. Like that. Okay, let's give some style. Chat is here and I will say chat info. Again, height will be 50 pixels. Let's give background color. Display will be flex. Align item center like that. And again, I'm going to separate them. Chain will be here and D will be here. So I'm going to say justify content. Space between. Like that. Of course, I can give some padding. And text color will be light gray. And what about those icons? Chat icons. Display flags. I'm going to give some gap. And uh, for each icon, I'm going to limit their heights. It's going to be 24 pixels and cursor pointer like that. OK, so far so good. So what about messages? We have a topper here and input component. And when we refresh our messages, we don't want to re-render those components. So let's create messages component. Messages. Class name, I will say messages, and it's going to include a couple of message. If you remember, we have a component here. We are going to call it here a couple times. Let's import. Okay, I want to call it here. Oops. Oh, sorry, I forgot here our folder. And it's going to be inside chat, not chat info. Okay, perfect. And finally, we are going to have here input component. Like that. Let's change this background color. Here is the chat. It's going to be here, messages, and background color will be our light color. And again, let's give padding. Okay, we are going to take care of those messages, but before I want to show you how we can arrange this messages height. 
To do that, firstly, I want to create this input. Let's open up input and give a class name. Okay, it can stay like that. And here I will just say input. Height will be 50 pixels and background color will be white. Okay, it can stay like that. We are going to handle this later. But before, let's calculate this message's height. As you can see, this is 50 pixels. But if you remember, it has 10 pixels padding, 10 from top, 10 from bottom. It means this top bar is 70 pixels. It's going to be exactly the same thing for this input. It's going to have padding 10 pixels also. So height 50 pixels, 10 pixels padding here, 10 pixels padding here, it's 70 pixels. So if I come here and say height, calculate 100% minus 160 pixels. That's because we have 20 pixels padding here also. It's going to give this full screen. Of course, there are other ways to do that, but I just want to show you how you can use Calculate properly. And I want you to be careful about paddings and margins. You have to calculate them. Okay, let's take care of this input. It's easier, I think. As you can see, we have an input here, two icons, and one button. But again, it's going to open up our folder. So basically, we are going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm going to go to input input text, placeholder, type something, and I'm going to create a div here. It's going to be send, and it's going to include our icons and send button. I will say image. It's going to be our first image. And I'm going to create here an input, and it's going to be file. I will say style, display none. And remember, we are giving an ID here to use it inside label, HTML for file, and inside another image. And finally, we are going to have a button, and it's going to say send. Let's import those images and use them here. And this one will be this one, like that. Okay. Let's make them horizontal and center all those items. I'm going to come here and say display flags, align item center, and just five content will be space between. Like that. Let's delete this border and outline. I will say input. Remember, this is our class name here. And this is the HTML element. I'm not writing dot here. Let's make this 100% so we can click it everywhere inside this long area. And I will say border none, outline none, and I'm going to change the font color. And font size will be bigger, like that. Let's change this color also. I'm going to say placeholder, color will be light gray. Okay, what about this div? If you remember, we have a send div here, we can use it. After this input, I'm going to say send class. Again, it's going to be centered and I will give some space between them. Like that. And for those images, let's reduce their sizes. I will say 24 pixels and cursor pointer like that and for this button there will be no border i'm gonna give some padding it's gonna be 10 from top and bottom 15 from left and right color will be white that because we are gonna change background color and it's gonna be let's say this color okay awesome so let's take care of those messages i'm gonna open up message component and I will say message, but there is something important here that because as you can see, there are two types of messages. 
First one will be this white one and second one is this blue one. So basically I'm going to need here a condition, but I'm going to make this later. That because we don't have any user, we don't have any data. So inside this message, we are going to have message info, which includes this avatar and this date. And secondly will be message content and it's going to include this text. And if there is an image, we are going to show it inside this div. So I will say message info and message content. Inside this info, we are going to have an image. Let's use the same image. And I will say span just now. And here we are going to have a p tag. I will say hello. And if there is an image, we are going to show it here. Again, I'm going to paste this image. Okay, let's take care of them. Inside messages, I will say message. It's going to be display flags and gap between user information and message content. And first one will be user information, which is message info. And second one will be content. And inside we have an image. I want to quickly change those image sizes that because as you can see they are really big let's say 40 pixels and object width and for other image it will be 50 percent so it's not going to be full screen like that okay of course it's a really big image what i want to do is to delete this image for now to see our messages better after that we can activate so what about this message info as you can see they are horizontal i want to change this this is message info i'm gonna go there and say display flags flex direction column and i want to change the color it's gonna be gray and front way it will be a little bit thinner like that and there is no space between them Let's say margin bottom, like that. And as you can see, it's overflowing here. So what I want to do is to go to parent here and overflow scroll. So if it doesn't fit inside this component, we will be able to scroll like that. Okay, so what about this content? I just want to give here a limit that because we can write really long message here. So I will say maximum width is going to be, let's say, 80%. Again, display flags, flags direction column. Remember, it includes text and image. I'm going to give space between them. And for the P tag, which is our text, I'm going to give background color. It's going to be white. Let's give some padding. And I want to change this border radius. This side will be really sharp. But for other edges, I'm going to give some radius. To do that, I will say border radius. Top left will be 0. We are not going to have any. But others will be 10 pixels. Like that. But if I add here one more class name. Let's say owner. I want to change their style message here inside this message i'm gonna say if it's message but at the same time it's owner i'm gonna change the direction to do that i'm gonna use display flex but this time i'm gonna change only direction flex direction is gonna be row again it's gonna be horizontal but this time it's gonna be reverse like that for this text, I'll say p tag, background color will be, let's say this color and text color will be white. Like that. Border radius, 10 pixels, 0 pixel, 10 and 10. Like that. It looks pretty good, but if we add our images back, as you can see, we have a problem here. To prevent this, 
I will go to P tag again. Actually, let's come here and I will say maximum width is going to be maximum content. So it's going to be maximum the length of this text, not bigger. And to move all those elements here, I'm going to come here, by the way, of course, this P tag inside message content. And I will say align items, flex end. So it's going to be end of the screen like that. Perfect. It looks pretty nice. So we finished our design. Right now we are going to need an authentication first. By the way, before starting, I want to show you how you can create responsive styles. Of course, this is not going to be fully responsive. I just want to show you how you can do this. I'm going to come here and create a SAS function. To do that, we are going to be using Mixin. And for example, for mobile devices, we are going to be using media query and I'm going to write here my condition and it's going to be maximum width 480 pixels. And inside we are going to write our contents. I can do the same thing for others, for example, for tablets and for laptops, for example. Let's change here. Like that. Of course, you can give more. And let me show you how you can do this. I will come here and say include tablet. And inside, I'm going to write my style. And it's going to be display node. Let's see. I'm going to open my console. I will shrink. Okay. Ah, this is form. <laughs> Of course, it's going to be inside home page, our container, navbar, and logo here. And right now, as you can see, there is no logo anymore. Like that. It's that easy. What else we can do here? For example, we can move this logo out to here. But before, we can maybe make this container larger. Let's copy this. And if you remember, we have a container here and it was 65%, but this time, let's say 90%. As you can see, it looks much better. What about this logout button? Here, I will just say position absolute. And I'm going to give its position bottom 10 pixels. But if we do that, as you can see, it appears here. But it's supposed to be here. To prevent this problem, the parent should be position relative. What's our parent? This sidebar. So I'm going to go to sidebar and I will say position relative. As you can see, it's here. And you can do the same thing for mobile devices. For example, you can only show those images. You can delete this text and this username. Whatever you want. I just want to show you how you can do this. And uh, maybe one more thing I can show, and it has variables. You can create your variables basically like that, dollar sign and, for example, dark color. And this color, for example. And I can use this color wherever I want. Like that. It's that easy. Okay, it's not that important. I don't want to waste time with this design. Let's take care of authentication. Of course, to do that, we should create a Firebase application. To do that, I'm going to go to Firebase, get started. Let's create a project. This is our previous project, if you remember. And I will say, just chat. I'm going to create my project. It's going to take a while, and after that, we are going to initialize our Firebase application. To do that, let's create here. Firebase.js And also, I'm going to open my console and I'm going to install Firebase. Yarn add Firebase. Okay, it's ready. 
Right now, let's create our web app. It's going to be chat again or whatever you want. And as you can see, npm install Firebase. We have already done that. And this is our configuration. I'm going to copy here and paste inside Firebase. Let me close this terminal and sidebar. Okay, I'm going to clear here. Okay, as you can see, it initializes our app like that. Of course, if you want to, you can store your API key or any other IDs inside an EMV file, but I'm not going to do that. It can stay. Let's export this app. And I'm going to export one more thing, and it's going to be auth. We are going to call get auth function from Firebase. Let's import. It comes from Firebase auth and get auth function. Let's see actually how we can do this. I'm going to go to documentation and right here, sign in email password. Okay, here. As you can see, we are going to create a user using an email and password. To do that, we are going to need this function. We have already created here. We are going to call it. And after that, we are going to use this function and send our email and password. Let's do that. I'm going to open app.js and let's call register again and open up register page. So what you can do here? Let's open up our app here. As you remember, we have four inputs here. You can create use state for each of them or there is one more option. You can create on submit event for this form and you can reach every single input inside. What I mean by that? I'm going to come here and say on submit and let's say handle submit. Let's create this function. Const handle submit. And when we click on this button, we don't want to refresh this page. To prevent this, I'm going to say event prevent default. Let's try to see what's inside this input, for example. I'm going to say console log event target, but we have four targets here. I'm going to take only first one. First one and value. I'm going to open my console, write here something, sign up, and as you can see, it's here. It means we can reach every input here. Let's copy this, and I'm going to say const display name email, password, and file. Of course, it's going to be second item, third item, and fourth item, and it's going to be files, and we are going to take the first file. It's going to be a single image. Right now, we can use them, but if you remember, it says we can use only email and password. We cannot send our picture or display name directly. Let's copy this and paste here. I'm going to import like that, but we are going to take this function from our file. I will say auth. And I can delete here. Let's see. I will say user gmail.com some password here. I will sign up. And it doesn't allow us that because we didn't initialize our authentication. Let's come here. And as you can see, there are many methods here. We are going to use email and password. I'm going to enable. I will save. And let's try again. Of course, we didn't write any console log or something. Let's console log this user. If I click again, it's going to be an error. That because we already have our user, I'm going to change here. And as you can see, this is our user. And it has display name, email, there's a phone number here, photo URL. So basically, we can update them later. Let's see how we can do this. Actually, I'm going to delete everything here. And I will say const response. Of course, it's an async function. So let's write here async and we are going to await our user here of course we can write here 
try catch block if there's an error we can console log or we can basically create here error set error use state at the beginning it can be false if there's an error we can make it true and we can show it somewhere here let's say if there's an error right here a span something went wrong or of course you can specify your error and after that we can update our profile picture and display name to do that we should be able to upload an image let's come here and check for that i will say upload image and as you can see we can use cloud storage to do that i'm gonna come here build and i'm gonna open this storage get started it can be test for now later we are gonna change it it's gonna be ready but let's see how we can do this as you can see we are gonna need this function let's copy this and paste inside our firebase file again and i will say export we are gonna use it and let's call this function here like that and after that as you can see we need to create a reference and we are gonna pass in our storage and a file name and after that we are gonna upload it like that but there is a better example here let's check for it okay here as you can see after creating our reference we are gonna use this function we are gonna send our reference and our file and after that we will be able to see the uploading percentage or any error and at the end of the process we will be able to see our url image url let's copy this and i'm gonna paste here let's take this to here on top of course we are gonna get our storage from our firebase file let's say storage in this case we don't need here okay so as you can see we should name our image in the storage what we can do we can just use username for example so i will say display name so if we create a user named john it's gonna be john.png or whatever and after that let's clear here as i said we can see our percentage but we don't need that i think i'm gonna delete we can make our error handling let's say if there's an error again set error is gonna be true and finally if everything is okay it's gonna return this downloadable url okay right now we have a user here and we are able to upload any image and i'm gonna come here and update my user I will say await update profile and it comes from firebase authentication and if you are using firebase you should get used to this because you are gonna import a lot of function like that by the way of course it should be async function and i'm gonna pass here my user it's gonna be response and user and what i'm gonna update if you remember there is a display name here and photo url we can update them i will say display name is gonna be our display name here and photo url will be this download url let's say photo url download url but it's not enough that because this user belongs only authentication database as you can see they are here but how we can reach other people it's not about authentication anymore we should be able to find our friends and chat with them to do that after registering this user i'm gonna save this user into another database again this is only authentication we can log in we can register we can update our user but we cannot reach other people to do that we are gonna use firebase database let's create again test mode okay it's ready 
basically we are going to create users collection here and we are going to add our users let's see how we can do this set a document add data to cloud fire store as you can see we are going to use this function it comes from firebase firestore and after that we are going to write here our collection name and it's going to be users and we are going to write here any unique id so which id we are going to use if you come here as you can see there is a uid here we can use it let's do that let's copy this and paste here i know there are a lot of functions but there is nothing to do <laughs> and i will come here and say wait set document document and as you can see there is a db here but we haven't created yet let's go to firebase and i'm gonna come here and say export const db and get firestore let's import it comes from firebase firestore like that okay we can use it here I will say db and our collection name is going to be users and unique id remember we have a user response.user and we can use its uid and after that we will write here what we are going to store as you can see it stores name state and country we are going to store our display name email and photo url I'm not storing password that because we are going to use this users collection to see other users and it's going to be download URL. Oops, of course it should be inside this function like that. And also we can write here user ID. It's going to be much easier to use it like that. Then we fetch this user. We are going to say only user.uid. Okay, let's see again. I'm going to refresh let's say john any password here i'm gonna choose an image let's choose this one and sign up of course we cannot see anything but if we check here i'm gonna refresh and as you can see it's here perfect and this is our image let's check okay perfect it works properly so what else we are gonna need here and we are going to need chat collection and also i want to create user chats collection it's going to include the all conversations we have it's going to be easier that because otherwise when we create here a chat collection it's going to include maybe thousands of chats and we are going to make a query sending our username to search for all chats belong us instead of that we can basically create users chat and its id can be our user id and we can take the list of our conversations using that collection it's going to be much easier so what i'm going to do here when we register any user we are going to create its users chat document here let's do this and you are going to understand better i will say one more await and set document and i will say user chats and again we are going to pass here our user id and it's going to be an empty object for now that because we don't have any conversation yet when we register we are not going to have any friends here but after when we search for anyone and when we click on his user card here we are going to add this user inside this collection and finally if everything is okay we are going to go to home page to do that we will be using react router dom let's open up our terminal and i will say and add react router dom let's see how we can use it as you can see we should wrap our app using this browser router and after that we are going to write each individual router for example for home page for login page for register page so i'm going to copy here and i'm gonna come here and let's delete this actually and i'm gonna paste my router like that and we are gonna wrap our app like that 
and we can create our roots and inside we are gonna write our roots first one will be our home page and whenever we visit our home page which is index page we are gonna call the home component and when we try to visit login URL let's say path login we are gonna call login page and for the register let's try as you can see this is home page I'm gonna go to login perfect and if I want to go to register it's gonna be register component it's that easy so let's write here our navigation to do that we are gonna be using use navigate hook let's say const navigate use navigate hook and it comes from react router dom okay so we can use this function and after successful operation we can go to home page like that let's see I will say user2 let's choose this image sign up and home page perfect it works but there is a problem here if we don't have any user we can still see this home page to prevent this we should check if we are logged in or not of course you can do this inside this app but we are gonna need this user everywhere for example in this navbar when we send any message in this chats component that because we are gonna fetch this data using our user id basically creating here user and sending this user everywhere is not a good idea we don't wanna make prop drilling instead we are gonna use context api let's come here and create context folder and it's going to be authentication context now i will say export const auth context and create context it comes from react and after that we are going to create an authentication provider and we are going to create our user there and we will be able to use that user inside every component in our app let's do that if you are watching my channel you already know how to use context api i'm not gonna explain again but in the future i want to create a video and in that video we are gonna deep dive into this context api let's create our provider i will say export const auth context provider and i'm gonna pass here children it represents our components and let's create our current user using use state i will say const current user set current user i will say use state and at the beginning we are not going to have any user but if we are logged in it means there is an authenticated user so how we are going to check it it's really easy to do this using firebase i think it's the strongest feature of firebase you don't have to worry about your authentication firebase is doing everything for you you are gonna see right now i'm gonna create here a user fact and i'm gonna check whether we have a user or not to do that we are gonna use again a firebase function on alt state change and we are gonna pass in our auth function and after that we are gonna check whether there is a user or not and if there's a user we are gonna set our current user let's import this okay it's not coming i will say import this function and it comes from firebase authentication let's see okay and uh, finally i will say auth context and provider and we are gonna wrap our children which is the component and in this case this children will be our application and we can send anything here value and we are gonna send current user 
it means this component can reach this current user. So any component that we wrap with this auth context provider will be able to reach this current user. So basically, we can wrap our entire application or you can go to index file here and you can wrap your app using this provider. I will say auth context provider and I'm going to wrap it like that. Let's test. I'm going to come here and say const current user use context hook. Which context we are going to use? We are going to use auth context, which we have created here. I'm going to save. Let's console log first. And as you can see, it's here. So even if I refresh the page, it's going to be still here. We don't have to worry about cookies, tokens, local storages, Firebase handles everything. Okay, but there is something important. Remember my use effect video. If you are listening any real time operation, you should use a cleanup function. Otherwise, it's going to cause some memory leaking. If you didn't watch that video, I highly recommend to watch it. It contains everything you need to know about use effect. So I will say const unsub and we are going to call it here. By the way, there is a white screen here. Now, yeah, OK, I didn't return here. OK, perfect. So how we can log out? There is a button here. Let's do this quickly. It's really easy. I'm going to open up navbar and I'm going to create here on click event. And I'm just going to call Firebase sign out function. And of course, it comes from Firebase authentication. Let's say import sign out from like that. And here I'm going to pass my Firebase authentication like that. And let's see. OK, this user is here. I'm going to log out and perfect. We don't have any user right now. So how we can prevent seeing this page? I'm going to go to app.js again. I can write here a condition. I can say if there's a current user, show home page. If there is no, show login page. But there is a better option. It's more professional. Basically, I'm going to create here a protected route. And we are going to check if there is a user or not. If there is not, it's going to navigate to login page. If there is, we are going to show any component. In this case, it's going to be home page. Let's say const protected route. Again, we are going to take any children. I will say if there is a current user, sorry, if there is no current user, just navigate to login page. I will say return and we are going to use React Router DOM navigate component and it's going to redirect us to login page. Like that. Let's import this. Like that. And I'm going to wrap my home component with this protected route. Like that. As you can see, even if we try to go to home page, it's going to login page. What about this login operation? Let's make this quick also. I'm going to go to login page. I'm going to do a similar thing. We are going to have error, navigation, handle, submit. Actually, I'm going to copy everything here. And paste. And let's delete here. And of course, we are going to have only email and password. So it's going to be zero, it's going to be one. We are not going to have any file. And let's write here our event on submit. It's going to be handle submit. OK, let's import those React hooks like that. And we are going to be using Firebase signing with email and password. Let's see. Sign in email password. Mm, 
we have already created our user and as you can see we are going to use this function let's copy this and paste here of course we are going to use our own authentication function and after that we are going to sign it like that i will say await let's import this and that's all and if everything is okay navigate to login page I'm gonna refresh and let's try actually I forgot my password <laughs> it was one two six I think let's try okay there is something wrong let's write our error actually I forgot that I'm gonna copy here and paste okay so I'm gonna create another user by the way I cannot click here again we are gonna be using react router DOM and we are gonna import link let's come here and I will say link and to register so I can do the same thing for register page like that okay perfect I'm gonna say Jane Jane at gmail.com one to six let's choose this woman and sign up okay there is a user but we cannot see our home page ah if there is a user we are gonna return our home page of course let's say children okay awesome i will log out as you can see we cannot see our home page anymore i will say jane of course it's an email sign in and it's still here okay we have a user oh of course home page not login okay perfect of course my password is really weak don't worry about that okay awesome right now we have a user let's change this image and this name i'm gonna open navbar and i'm gonna call here our current user i will say const current user use context and authentication context let's use it it's going to be current user dot photo url and it's going to be current user display name and perfect it's here as you can see it's really easy and if we check our db let's find our user here okay this one this is our user id and if we check here you are gonna see that there's same id here and it's an empty document right now that because we don't have any friend so let's take care of finding a user i'm gonna open up let's close everything actually and i'm gonna open up search so what we are gonna do when we search for any name here any display name and when we enter we are gonna see the result here let's do that so let's create here username for the input set username use state hook and one more and it's gonna be the actual user we don't have any user yet let's say null and we can create maybe error like that so when we write anything inside this input are gonna change this username let's take this 
and I will say on change methods set username event target and value and when we enter we are gonna search for a user and if there is a user we are gonna set this state to do that I'm gonna come here and say one more event and it's gonna be on key down and let's say handle key basically it listens our keyboard actions and when we press on enter we are gonna search for user let's create this function first handle key if e code equals enter just search for user we can create here a search function let's say handle search and we can call it here like that so how we can search any user to do that we are going to use firebase query let's check as you can see we are going to need some more functions and after that we are going to say find the collection named cities in our case is going to be users and create a query and here we are going to write our condition we are going to say if display name equals username find the user so let's copy this and import them i'm going to paste and i will say import db from firebase like that so i will say const query collection we are going to pass inside our db and which collection we are going to reach is going to be users and i will say where display name equals this username okay and after that using this query we are going to search for our users like that as you can see we are going to use get documents and we are going to use our query and here it's going to return our user here and here we can set our user so let's copy this and i will paste of course it's going to be an async function and get documents from firestore and if there's a user we are going to set our user documents dot data of course we can write it inside try catch block and if there's an error we can set our error or just true let's use this user here delete this and it's gonna be user.url and its name Of course, if we don't have any user, we are not going to return this div. I will say if there is user. And here, if there is an error, we can say user not found or something went wrong. Okay, let's try. I will say John. As you can see, it's here. Perfect. And after finding, we should be able to choose this user. So when we click on this user, we are going to add this user inside user chats. And also we are going to create here chats collection. And it's going to include all chat messages between two people. So let's create here an on click event. I will say on click and handle select. So when we click on this user div, we are going to call this function. Firstly, let's see what we are going to do. As I said, there will be chats collection here. And it's going to include the chat between two people. So how it's going to know that this is the chat between John and Jane. Basically, we can take Jane's user ID and John's user ID. We can join them together and write it here as a document ID. And after that, it's going to include messages array and it's going to include message details so first check whether the group 
exists or not. I mean, this group is chat's collection in Firestore. And if it doesn't exist, just create new one. And again, if it doesn't exist, we should create user chats for each user. We are going to add conversation with John inside this user chat. I know it sounds complicated, but when we create and when we see it on our application, you are going to understand better. So I will say create user chats for Jane and for John. Let's do that. It's going to be an async function. And I will say const response and await get document. We are going to call our DB and we are going to look inside chats collection. And we are going to write here the ID of those users. We are going to join them and write it here. Let's do this. I'm going to write here combined ID. And we are going to write here a logic. I will say if current user's ID, by the way, we should take this current user using auth context. So I will say const current user use context hook and auth context. Context and our context here. So we can use this user ID. I will say current user dot UID. If it's bigger than user dot UID, we are going to write here current user dot UID plus user dot UID. If user ID is bigger than our current user's ID, it's going to be the opposite. User dot UID plus current user ID. Like that. And I'm going to search for this ID here. Let's say try catch. Okay. And I'm going to write here a condition. I will say if response doesn't exist, it means if there is no chat between John and Jane inside this chats collection, we are going to create new one. So I will say if response exists. It's a Firebase method, by the way. If it doesn't exist, I will say create chat. Remember how we are doing this. I will say await set document like that. And we are going to send our DB here. And inside chats collection, we are going to create a document and its ID will be combined ID, by the way. I should wrap this and after that it's going to be empty we are not going to have any message actually we can say messages and it's going to be an empty array okay and after that we are going to create user chats but here there is something we need to know as you remember we are creating user chat when we register this is our user ID and we don't have any conversation yet. Here is empty. But when we search for John and when we click on his user card, we are going to add it here. But not only the user, there will be also this latest message here. So basically, we have user chats. And inside, we have Jane's ID. And inside, we are going to have the conversation between John and Jane. So it's going to be our combined ID. And inside this, we are going to need a couple of things. We are going to need user information, which includes this image, display name, and maybe its ID. And we are going to need last message. And also, I'm going to add a date. That because we are going to sort this chats list. So it's going to be something like that user info is going to include john's display name john's image his id and we are going to have last message of course we are not going to have any last message for now and date and it's going to be current date so our structure is something like that 
but how we are gonna update our user chat here let's come here and search for update documents it's here i think okay it's a set function okay update as you can see we are gonna use update doc function and inside we are gonna write our reference and finally we are updating it like that but as you realize we are gonna have some nested objects we are gonna have combined id and inside we are gonna have user info so for those nested objects as you can see it's here only thing we should do is using dot so it's gonna be combined id dot user info combined id dot date or whatever we are gonna use like that let's do that i'm gonna delete here and i will say await update document doc and db by the way there is no comma here like that and it's gonna be user chats and we are gonna look for our users chat and inside i will say combined id dot user info this is how you can use a variable and a string together and it's gonna be uid user dot uid display name user dot display name and photo url it's gonna be user dot photo url and i'm gonna add here date again combined id and date and it's gonna be the current date but we are not gonna use date dot now instead we are gonna use firebase server timestamp we are using this because it calculates different time zones and something like that so let's say server timestamp like that okay as you can see i'm not writing combined id and last message that because when we search for any user we are not gonna have any latest message we are gonna add it here inside this input when we send we are gonna send our message to chats collection and also we are gonna send it here inside user chats so i'm gonna do the same thing for the other user so it's gonna be user uid again combined id and other details but i'm gonna change here it's gonna be current user when we see them here you are gonna understand better let's see i hope everything is okay i'm gonna search for john i'm gonna click okay something is wrong okay i forgot here doc and this is not docs get doc i'm gonna click again and let's check okay as you can see this is jane's id we added here the combined id we have a date here we have a user info object and later we are gonna have here the latest message and here as you can see this is combined id and inside messages it's empty for now so right now we can fetch all user chat and we can use this to fetch latest conversations let's do that by the way when we click on this user we can close this search bar i mean this user so i will come here and say let's delete this i'm gonna say set user it's gonna be null again and also i can delete this input text so it's gonna be set username it's gonna be an empty string again let's try i will click okay user has gone but it's still here that because we didn't use this value here it's gonna be username as you can see it's gone perfect right now let's delete those users instead fetch them from our db so let's open up chats and here instead of those users we are gonna fetch our conversations so i'm gonna create here chats set chats new state 
at the beginning is going to be an empty array and we are going to fetch using use effect but we are not going to fetch this data only once it's going to be real time we are going to actually listen this collection so whenever something changes here we are going to see it here immediately to do that we are going to use firebase on snapshot let's see actually i will say real time get as you can see we are going to use this method and it's going to return us the real time data this is one of the best features of firebase let's copy this i'm going to paste on snapshot document and our db we are gonna look inside user chats and here is gonna be current users id let's fetch this i will say const current user use context and auth context and after that we can set our data i will say set chats it's gonna be document and data as you can see there is a missing dependency here it's going to be current user dot id and as you realize it gives us unsub here we should clean up so let's see what we have i will say console log and chats of course we are going to have an error most probably that because at the beginning we are not going to have user id let's see as you can see it's empty to prevent this issue i'm going to wrap this with a function let's say const get chats like that and i'm going to write here a condition i will say if there is current user id after call this function like that as you can see this is here and we are gonna use this user info here but there's a problem here that because this is an object not an array but don't worry we are gonna convert this object into an array let's write here object dot and freeze and chats and right now as you can see it's an array and this is our chat and inside as you can see there are two elements the first element is the chat id and the second element is object so this is chat id and this is our content so let's do that i'm gonna delete other users here i'm just gonna leave one of them and i will say object dot entries i'm gonna pass here our chats and i will say map for each chat we are going to return this user of course if you are using a loop give here a unique key and it's going to be chat and the first element remember this is id and for other informations we are going to use chat1 that's right here chat1 dot display name and chat1 last message dot text of course we don't have yet but we are gonna have okay image is still the same let's change it chat one and photo url user info of course let's choose them user info okay perfect so what i'm gonna do when we click on this user we are gonna see the chat between us and this user basically we are gonna store this user information somewhere and we are gonna use it here to do that again we are gonna use context api otherwise we have to come here and create here user set user 
we have to send it to sidebar and inside sidebar we are going to send it to our chat and we are going to use it inside this chat component to prevent this again we are going to use context so i will say user context or let's say chat context and let's copy this and paste here I'm gonna change here okay but right now we are gonna do something different we are gonna use use reducer that because we are gonna need this user information and also the combined ID to fetch this chat remember in chats collection we are going to search for a specific chat to do that we are going to use this combined id so we are going to need a state like this user and it's going to include user information and also chat id and since this chat id depends on this user it's better to use use reducer here if you didn't watch my use reducer video i recommend you to watch it first and after you are going to understand everything better so I'm going to create here an initial state. I'll say const initial state. We are going to have chat ID. And we are going to have a user. Let's create our reducer. I'll say const chat reducer. We are going to take a state and action. And we are going to have only one action here and it's going to be change user. When we click on this user, we are going to change this user. At the same time, we are going to update this chat ID. Let's say switch action type. I'm, I'm writing switch because maybe we can add something more here. We can block the user or something like that. So it can stay like that. I will say case let's say change user and we are going to return a different state but there's a warning here that because we don't have default i will say default oops it's going to be here and return state okay what we are going to return here firstly we are going to update our user it's going to be action payload and after that, we are going to update our chat ID. I'm going to write exactly the same thing here. Let's copy this and paste here. Of course, we don't have current user. Let's import. Use context. It's going to be inside here. That because it's a component and after that we are going to update this id of course it's going to be action and payload and finally we are going to get our state and dispatch and we are going to send them here to use in any component so i will say state dispatch i will say use reducer and chat reducer and our initial state here let's send this state actually i will say data equals state and we are going to send this dispatch so we will be able to dispatch this action and update our user and chat id so we can search for index file and one more context here and it's going to be chat context provider okay let's use it here I'm going to create one more context and it's going to be chat context and we are going to fetch dispatch and when we click on any user here let's say on click handle select const handle select and we are going to update our user to do that we are going to use dispatch and type will be user change what was the name okay change user uh, 
and payload will be our user here of course we should send it here we are going to send user information remember chat one dot user info and it includes its id image and display name of course function like that and we are going to take this user and pass it here like that let's open up chat component and again use this chat context that because we are going to update this name and of course we are going to fetch user let's import them quickly and it's going to be user dot display name okay it's not here now oh, okay we send as a data it's going to be data dot user of course if there is a user display name I will click and as you can see it's here perfect and uh, what about these messages let's open up messages I'm gonna copy this and paste here and let's create use state messages set messages and this time we are gonna fetch this data here chats combined id and messages i will say use effect const unsub on snapshot document our db chats and we are gonna pass here the combined id remember it's inside data chat id and after that we are going to take this document and i'm going to write here a condition i will say if document exists set our messages and it's going to be document dot data oops and of course we are going to clean up and it's going to be data dot chat id so we can map through our messages right now and this time it's an array remember so we can directly use map I will say messages dot map for each message just return a message component and message will be this message and I can delete the rest and I'm gonna open message here and take the prop it's gonna be message and let's see what we have console log and message i'm gonna open my console i will click okay something is wrong messages is not a function let's comment this out for now and check if we have messages or not okay messages yeah, of course it's gonna be messages we are fetching this document but we didn't say messages okay I will open okay I can click right now and we are gonna show them here by the way I'm gonna give here a unique key and it's gonna be m dot id and here is gonna be user id remember but it depends on this message if it belongs us we are gonna show here our image if it doesn't belong us we are gonna show user image so we are gonna need our current user here use context context and one more is gonna be chat context that because we are gonna need other user and I will say data 
And I will say if message sender ID belongs to us, we are going to show our message. Actually, let's close here for now. And first, let's type something. And after that, it's going to make sense how we are going to do this. I'm going to open input. Let's take them. And I'm going to write here two use states. We can send a text and we can send an image. So I will say const text set text use state. And one more is going to be image. And let's write here on click method. I will say handle send. Firstly, let's take our text here. I will say on change, set text, event, target, and value. And for this file, I will say on change, set file, and it's going to be event, target, and files, and the first one. It's not file, it's image. Okay, right now we can send them. Firstly, I'm going to check whether there's a file or not. If there is no, we are going to send only this text. So I will say if there's a file, upload and send. I said again file is going to be image. If there is no image, just send text. And let's see how we can update arrays. I'm going to come here and update array. Okay, here update elements in array as you can see we are choosing our document here and after that our array in this case is going to be messages and we are using this method array union i will say async function and i'm going to say await update document db collection name is going to be chats and here we are going to use combined ID, which is data.chat ID. And inside this, we are going to use messages and array union. And we are going to pass here our message. Firstly, we should give here any unique ID. That's because we are going to use it here. To do that, we can use UUID library. I will say yarn at UUID. Let's import. We are going to use version 4. Let's say as UUID. Let's use it here. And after that, we are going to send our text. We are going to send sender ID. It's going to be current user.uid because we are sending. And finally, a date. But we cannot use here server timestamp. Instead, we are going to use normal timestamp. And we are going to choose the current date, like that. And what if there is an image? Remember how we are sending image. Let's open up register. I'm going to copy here. Let's import them quickly. Our storage. And this name will be, again, it can be UUID or the current date, whatever you want. But it should be a unique name. I'm going to import this. And our image. Let's come back. I'm going to copy this. And paste here. You can handle your error here. We are going to take this URL and send this message again but this time we are going to send image also i will paste and this time it's going to be image and this image will be download url let's try i hope everything is okay i'm going to choose this and i will say hello this is a test I'm going to send. Okay, there is something wrong. Oops. 
it's going to be a function of course and here okay and as you can see it's here perfect and this is our id i will choose this image and test two and let's see and as you can see it's here perfect it works right now we can take care about our messages by the way after sending we can delete our image and this text it's gonna be an empty string and image will be null but of course we should update this site also which is user chats in this case we are gonna add here the latest message and we are gonna send our text and its date and we should do this both for Jane and John so I'm gonna come here and say await update document our db here and user chats current user dot uid and remember how we are updating nested objects i'm gonna say data dot chat id because remember we are storing them using this combined id and let's say last message and inside this we are gonna send text and also we are gonna update this date this date that because we are gonna sort this list and I'm gonna say data dot chat ID dot date and it's gonna be server timestamp we can use it here but we cannot use it in array union comma here okay let's do the same thing for other user data dot user dot user id and exactly the same thing let's see i'm gonna refresh i'm gonna choose john test for sidebar i'm gonna send okay and this is here perfect but we cannot see it here let's check chats okay not user info it's gonna be just last message like that perfect by the way we can delete this input text to do that we are gonna use value here and it's gonna be text okay perfect but how we are gonna sort those items I'm gonna create one more user let's say Adam it can be this guy I'm gonna search for John sorry we are Jane we should test Jane I'm gonna click and as you can see it's here perfect hi Jane I'm Adam I will send as you can see it's here but this is the latest message it should be at the beginning and here okay it looks correct but it's totally random to prevent this we can go to chats and we can sort this chats array to do that we are going to use sort methods and we are going to take two examples and we are going to compare them remember there is a date here we can use it i'm going to say dot date minus b dot date if you don't know how to sort items in javascript i recommend you to google it it's nothing complex okay it's not correct it should be b minus a okay perfect and it's here also if we write something to john
And as you can see, it's here. Perfect. But we didn't show them here. Let's open this. I'm going to open like that. And I'm going to write here a condition. I will say if message dot sender ID equals our ID, it means it belongs to us. So we can show our image. So I'm going to say current user dot photo URL. If it's not, show users. Of course, data dot user. And I can do the same thing for our class name here. Remember, we can write here owner. So I'm going to say write here message, but also check this message sender ID, sender. If it belongs to us, write here owner. And it's going to be text. And if there is an image, we are going to show it here. Message dot image. And of course, it should be a condition here. If there is no image, we shouldn't show it. So I will say message dot image like that. As you can see, it's here. Perfect. But there's a problem here. If I write something, it still stays here but it should scroll to the latest message. To do that, we are going to use use ref hook. I will say const ref use ref and I'm going to use it here. And whenever we create a new message, we are going to scroll. To do that, we can use use effect. I will say dot current scroll into view and this animation will not be sharp, it's going to be smooth. So I will say behavior smooth. And whenever we receive any message, let's import this. Use effect. I'm here. I will send a message. As you can see, it's here. Perfect. Okay, perfect. And that's all I think. So let's deploy our application. So I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to say npm run build. And it's going to create here a build folder, as you can see. And it's going to build the necessary files. As you can see, it's ready. Let's check. And there's an index file here and static files, which includes our CSS and JavaScript files. So it's really easy to handle that. Let's go to the Hostinger panel. And here I'm going to choose File Manager. As you can see, there is a default page here. But we are going to change it. Let's click here, Public HTML. And as you can see, there is a default file here. I'm going to delete this. And let's choose those files and move here. As you can see, it took just 5 seconds. Let's check our website. I'm going to refresh. As you can see, it's here. And as you realize, our connection is secure. That's because we have an SSL certificate. Let's register. I'm going to choose an image. And it's here. Let's find any user. Okay, perfect. And others. Okay. As you can see, it's here. Let's send this cat.
and this is our website and it's here awesome it works so that's all guys i hope you liked it don't forget it's just a tutorial i'm not providing any complete application of course you are gonna find some errors that because we are not testing anything here but don't worry just use our social media groups and ask your questions and as always if you learn something new today please like the video you can support Lamadev using the link in the description below or by joining the channel i hope i will see you in the next tutorial Goodbye.